a blessed Lord's Day to you on this Feast of the Resurrection of our Lord, Easter Day. Welcome to visitors who have joined us. We pray that your time of worship with us is blessed as our God comes to us to bless us with his gifts through his means of grace, his word, and sacraments. Now, in this day, this day is often called Easter Sunday. Properly, today is Easter Day, the third of several observances that may be held for the Feast of the Resurrection, including the Vigil of Easter on Saturday night, Easter Sunrise, Easter Day, Easter Evening, and so on. There are, in fact, seven Easter Sundays in this season, and in the church we regard every Sunday, every Lord's Day, as a little Easter this morning, we follow an adapted and abridged divine service, setting one, beginning on page 151 in Lutheran service book. For now, though it is one of the high feast days of the church year, we continue as a congregation to observe a fast from the Eucharist. We rise for the procession of the cross. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. My strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shall receive in the You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the Feast of the Resurrection of our Lord, Easter Day, is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I now understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, the third chapter. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The women went to the tomb early the first day of the week. They expected to find their beloved rabbi, Jesus, still dead and buried. They expected to find the stone rolled in front and the tomb still sealed. Perhaps the women had heard about the guard of soldiers at the tomb, so they expected to find the guards. We know why the guards were there, to prevent grave robbers, and not just any grave robbers, but specific ones, the disciples of Jesus. The religious leaders feared that the disciples would come to steal his body and then claim, look, he's risen from the dead. But the disciples were sad, disappointed, dispirited. They were in no frame of mind to consider, much less carry out such a plot. Everyone expected a dead man to stay dead. That's the way the world has always been. Oh, there would be a grave robber, just not the one that those leaders expected. But Jesus was dead, and not dead in any ordinary fashion, from sickness or the bodies wearing out after many years. He had been crucified, the most vile death. And they had piled on the pain, suffering, and humiliation. A crown of thorns, spitting, beatings, pulling out the beard, and flagellation that ripped into his flesh. Have we not also piled on the pain, suffering, and humiliation by our sin? our rebellion against God, our own betrayals against him, our feeble efforts at love toward our neighbor and toward our own families and friends. We truly should be sorrowful over our sins and over the sinfulness of the world around us. Do we need to confess our sins of good we have left undone as well as evil we have done. Do you ponder doubts in your heart about whether or not he will bring us out of this time of crisis? Or maybe you're sure he will, but will he do it soon enough? Why did he let this happen in the first place? Why did God let this happen? That question has been asked of God from the beginning, ever since the human race turned against him. Why did we let it happen? Isn't that the question that really tells us where the responsibility and guilt lay? With us. We have heard it said so much in this current crisis. We've never seen anything like this before, and the world will never be the same. No need to list all of the changes to behavior and life being imagined and suggested. Read the newspaper, if you still do, or check your nightly news. The truth is, as one retired medical doctor, who also used to be Missouri Synod Lutheran, as he has said, we've seen this movie before. And we have. Not just diseases, but recessions, depressions, wars, terrorism, scandals in politics, sports, and entertainment. The world does go back to being mostly the same. For every crisis is rooted in sin, our rebellion against our Creator. After that, 
the world was never the same. Sin and death changed everything ever since. Crisis, from the Greek, means judgment. And God has judged sin and death and the world and you and me. Certainly, with the death of Jesus, that question again was certainly on the minds and the hearts and the lips of those disciples. Why did God let this happen to his faithful servant and son? For judgment. He laid the judgment and penalty upon his beloved son Jesus on the cross. He was judged the worst sinner ever in our place. And now on this, the third day, God the Father has pronounced his absolution upon the whole world in the resurrection from the dead of his holy and innocent and beloved son Jesus Christ. For this, a man raising himself from the dead, and forever, this is truly the event, the crisis, when we may say with all truthfulness, the world will never be the same again. Alleluia! All of the crises before and since have been part decay of the fallen world, part active human sin, and part work of the devil to destroy mankind and our trust in God's goodness. Of all of this, King Solomon long ago declared, there is nothing new under the sun. But of this, the permanent eternal resurrection of Jesus from the dead, the Lord long ago declared through his prophet Isaiah, Behold, I am doing a new thing. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. For his own sake, the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose blood blots out your transgressions, the Lord forgives and forgets your sins. Christ is risen, and your sins lie dead and buried. So you are no longer the same. Conceived and born a sinner, you are now raised with Christ, a sinner saint here on earth. But a saint, a holy one in Christ before God in heaven. And you'll know that you are not alone. You have a whole family, brothers and sisters from all times and places, from every tribe and nation and people and tongue, with one God and Father, and Christ, our elder brother, united by the power of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ Jesus, born of Mary, is raised from the dead, and we are his members, his church, ever living ever alive in him. Amen, amen. The world has never been and never will be the same. Of all the events in the history of the world, why, this current crisis will pass. But this is the one event, the one truth that has changed even the way the world marks time. B.C., before Christ, and A.D., Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. Len Scrivener, writing recently at the Gospel Coalition, summarizes the research of Rodney Stark, a leading authority on the sociology of religion, from Stark's book, The Rise of Christianity. One of the key factors Stark identifies in Christianity's rise is 
plagues and how the church has responded in the way of Christ. The plague of Cyprian, A.D. 249 to 262, was a lethal pandemic that at its height caused upwards of 5,000 deaths a day in Rome. And you thought Italy was suffering now. Stark estimates that at this time there were 45,000 Christians in existence, just eight hundredths of a percent of the empire. While the plague severely weakened the Roman Empire, the Christian response to it won admiration and a greater following. As recorded by Eusebius in his Ecclesiastical History, Dionysius, Bishop of Alexandria at the time, reported, most of our brother Christians showed unbounded love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ. And with them departed this life serenely happy, for they were infected by others with the disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their pains. Many, in nursing and curing others, transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. As strange as it may sound, the Lord has used plagues to grow the church from an obscure and marginal movement to around 6 million believers by A.D. 300. When the Black Death hit the city of Wittenberg in 1527, Martin and Katharina Luther stayed to care for those in need. Luther wrote, We are here alone with the deacons, but Christ is present too, that we may not be alone, and he will triumph in us over that old serpent, murderer, and author of sin, however much he may bruise Christ's heel. Pray for us and farewell. Recalling Genesis 3, Luther sees Satan, who is a murderer from the beginning, standing behind the plague. Yet Christ is far stronger and far more involved. He is in those providing care. He is in the sick. And he is in the victory the church will experience over Satan. Through the Luther's faithful service, God again vindicated the gospel, the way of Christ crucified and risen for us. Though the enemy clearly meant the plague for evil, God used it for good to help the fledgling Reformation grow and spread. In the church, this April 15th is not tax day, but Easter Wednesday, still the feast of the resurrection of our Lord. And we remember a certain Josef van Voister, a 23-year-old Belgian missionary who again followed the way of Christ in response to a plague. He went to the Hawaiian Islands in 1863 in the midst of Hawaii's severe leprosy epidemic. Most lepers were simply dumped on the island of Molokai. In 1873, Yosef, better known as Father Damien, was sent at his own request to Molokai. He organized burial details and funeral services, taught the people how to grow crops, organized a choir, and gave them medical attention. Government doctors would visit, but they would only examine patients from afar, fearful of the contagion. They would leave medicine on a table and then flee. Father Damien personally washed, anointed, and bandaged their sores. With the aid of patience, he replaced the small chapel with a larger one, which overflowed every Sunday. In 1885, Father Damien contracted leprosy himself, 
but kept working until his death on April 15th, A.D. 1889. Physical death from many different causes has continued throughout the world, same as before. And we've been hearing it a lot, the world will never be the same again. We've heard it before. Much of the world, though, does return to the way it was before the crisis. On this feast of the resurrection of our Lord, this Easter day, let us truly remember the change to the world that is absolutely worth remembering. More than that, it is worth calling out, crying out, singing out, shouting out. We must remember it, and we must speak it. We must proclaim it. It's the good news. It's the great news. It's the best news ever. How can we keep it to ourselves? How can we keep it hidden inside? On their Easter card this year, doctors Fred and Grace Holmes give us an idea of how to start. Inspired by their time as medical missionaries in Tanzania. Easter Sunday 2020, here is the view from Moshi, Tanzania, of the two peaks of Mount Kilimanjaro, Kibo and Mawenzi. On Easter Sunday morning, coming from the foothills, one can hear Lutheran and Catholic Christians shouting in Swahili, Ame Fufuka, he is risen. Go out into your front yard and join them this Easter Sunday morning. The Christian villages in East Africa try to outdo each other in shouting, Ame Fufuka, he is risen, filling the valleys with the joyous acclamation on Easter Day. So let's do like they do. And as the Holmeses suggest, go out your front door and fill the air of Shawnee, of Lenexa, of Johnson County, and the Kansas City Metro with the sounds of the great good news, the truth that cannot die, the truth that means that the world truly will never again be the same because of him. Ame Fufuka! Alleluia! Christ is risen! And now let us live like we mean it. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds by his spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises. The Lamb the sheep has ransomed, Christ who only is sinless, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. 
In our prayers, we include Bonnie LaBelle, who was taken to the emergency department on Good Friday with fluid in the lining of her left lung, and Clayton Seals, son of Hope kindergarten teacher Lali Ochoa, who is a fireman and EMT in Lawrence and is at home with a viral illness. Let us pray. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that you have done to save us and set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that de death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love that we may love you above all things, love our neighbors as ourselves, and our fellow believers as you first loved us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, and Michael, our vice president, Laura, our governor, and all of our elected and appointed public servants. Guide them according to your word and grant them wisdom to govern prudently, safeguarding our liberty, that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, the unborn, the aging, and the unemployed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, by your strong arm defend from every danger to body and soul those who serve to protect and defend us, our medical and health care professionals. our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, rescue workers, and emergency service personnel, and the members of our armed forces. Bless especially the research of those finding treatments Lead us to recognize and utilize their success with all diligence that the sick may be healed and grant us an end to this pandemic quickly and soon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, grant your healing grace and power to the ill, the injured, the convalescing, including Bonnie LaBelle, Clayton Seals, Rob Kaler, baby Levi and his nurse, Pastor Ed Trost, Pastor Ur Doherty, Laurie Sample, Jerry Williams, Dave Heimsoff, Pastor Eugene Stowes, Miriam Stowes, Donna Holston, Diane Harries, Sandy Rhodes, and Maria Lechman. Receive our thanks for healing and successful treatments already received. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions in the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people, delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, we give you thanks for your servant Damien and his gospel mission of mercy in your name to the lepers of Hawaii and for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of dis disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us, with Job, the solemn and joyous expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. A reminder, again, please continue to send in your tithes and offerings or bring them here to the church 
in support of our Lord's mission work here and beyond in his kingdom. We sing the offertory hymn. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, restoring all creation in the Paschal Feast, grant that we who celebrate your feast, kindled with heavenly desires, may ever thirst for the fountain of life, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia!